Hello, good morning children. You will be thinking what this teacher is appearing again and again. But we have to, isn't it? We have to go with our lessons. In this COVID situation, you are not able to come to school. Right? So you can learn from home. So in that way, we have to learn. Isn't it? So our work must go on. We should not stop. So today, again I am your science teacher, right? So today we will learn something about animals. Animal boy. We will learn about animal boy. So what do you know about animals? Right? What do you know about animals? Ah uh, yes, there are some pet animals, some domestic animals and some wild animals also. So can you keep wild animals in your home? No, you cannot keep wild animals in your home. So this, so this uh, earth is a place where you find different types of animals, isn't it? So you find different types of animals and these animals are diverse in nature. Diverse in nature and they, they are different. So in what way they are different? Animals are diverse in nature. Animals are diverse in nature. In what way? Diverse in nature means different in nature. In what way they are different? They are different in nature. In what way? In what way? You find animals around everywhere on earth, isn't it? But they are diverse in nature, different in nature. In what way? They have different habitats are different. Habitats are different. Their feeding habits are different. Isn't it? Habitats are different. Feeding habits are different. Feeding habits are different. Isn't it? Even their movements are different. Movements are also different. They have different movements. Movements are different. In this way, they show different characteristics. Isn't it? So in this way, they show they show different characteristics. Isn't it? In this way, they show different characteristics, isn't it? So, you find animals everywhere, isn't it? On the earth, but they are different in nature, diverse in nature. In what way they are diverse? They have different habitats, they have different feeding habits, their movements are different. In this way, they show different characteristics. So, here, we will learn about the habitats of the animals. What we will learn? We will learn about the habitats of the animal. So, today we are going to learn about the habitats. What are we going to learn today? Habitats of the animals. Now, what do you mean by habitat? We have to learn about the habitat. Now, what do you mean by a habitat? Now, on earth we find animals everywhere. So, in a place, the place where an animal lives or found naturally is called its habitat. So what is a habitat? A place where an animal lives or found naturally or found naturally is called its habitat is called its habitat. So now, animals are diverse in nature. So they have different characteristics now. Right? Their habitats are different. Their feeding habits are different. Their movements are different. So in that way, they show different characteristics. So in this lesson here, first of all, we will learn about the habitat of the animal. Isn't it? So, a place, now what do you mean by a habitat? A place where an animal, where an animal lives or found naturally is called its habitat. So here, there are different types of habitats. There are different types of habitats. We must learn about the different types of habitats. Now, different types of habitats. Now, what are those different types of habitats? Let us learn one by 
by one with the side edges. Let us learn different types of habitats. First one is forest. Second one is polar region. First one forest. Second polar region. Next mountains. Next deserts. Next fresh water. And the last one is oceans. Isn't it? So in that way, they have different habitats. So the main habitats what we will learn here today is about the forest, polar region, mountains, deserts, fresh water and oceans. So in this way, there are different types of habitats. All these are the different types of habitats. They are forest, polar region, mountains, deserts, fresh water and oceans. So now we have to learn about each habitat in detail. So let us come to the forest first. Now what do you mean by forest? Forest means what? It is an area where trees grow naturally. What is a forest? What is a forest? It is an area where where Trees and plants grow naturally. Isn't it? They grow naturally. So what do you mean by forest? Forest is an area where trees and plants grow naturally. Forest, you are not going and planting any trees there. Or am I going and planting there? No, you and me are not doing anything. They are going, growing by their that means they are growing naturally. So, forest is an area where trees and plants grow naturally, isn't it? So, you have learned about different types of habitats here, isn't it? Forest, polar region, mountains, deserts, fresh and or fresh water, oceans. Now, forest, polar regions, mountains, desert, these are all come under land habitats, isn't it? They are on land. These two only are water. So we are learning about the land habitat. In that we have learned about the forest first. We are learning, we are knowing about the forest. So what do you mean by forest? Forest is an area where trees and plants grow naturally. So in that way, what do you find? You find different kinds of animals living in a forest. Yes or no? You find different kinds of animals living in a forest. So the animals that live in forests are Forest. What are the animals that we live in forest? Lion, tigers, isn't it? Fox, isn't it? Deer, all these you find in a forest. And moreover, you find monkeys also. And that live on trees. And you find monkeys also that live on trees. Monkeys also. That live on trees, isn't it? Trees. So in this way, forest is giving shelter to many animals and birds. Yes or no? So in this way, forests are the places where trees and plants grow naturally, isn't it? You and me are not going and planting any trees there. They are growing by their own. So they have grown naturally. That is why it is a forest. And you find animals like lion. And monkeys that live on trees and birds also live on trees. In that way, you find many creatures living in the forest. And moreover, forest provide shelter to many animals, isn't it? Forest provide shelter to many animals, isn't it? So forest provide shelter to many animals. Forest provide Shelter to many animals, isn't it? Shelter to many animals. Like rats, rabbits, snakes, snakes. 
all these live in burrows in forest. Using living burrows, isn't it? So forest is providing to shelter to many small animals and many types of insects are also found in the forest. So forests provide shelter to many animals like rats, rabbits, snakes. All these live in the burrows and many small animals and insects are also found. Very small animals and insects are also found. And insects are also found in the forest. Are also found in the forest. Isn't it? So, you have learned about the forest here. What you have learned about the forest? Forest is also an habitat for animals. Yes, forest, what do you mean by a forest? Forests are grown naturally. Trees grow, trees and plants grow naturally in a forest. So area where trees and plants grow naturally is said to be a forest. So, forest you find many types of animals. Monkeys, they live on the trees. Many birds, this forest give shelter to many birds and other animals. Like snakes, rats, rabbits all live in the burrows. Still you have very small animals and insects are also found in the forest. So, this is all about the habitat, about the forest. So, did you understand children? Is it clear? Forest, the word forest is one of the habitats. It provides shelter to many animals. <coughs> now, let us come to the next habitat that is polar region. So, let us learn about the polar region. Now, what do you know about the polar region? You know, Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circles, North Poles and South Poles. Antarctic and the North Pole, Arctic region, North Poles. Are they Antarctic? South Poles. These regions are always covered with snow. These regions are always covered with snow. Always covered with snow. Isn't it? So when is the cover always covered with snow? How will be the climate there? It will be severely cold. Very cold throughout the year. Isn't it? So near the North Poles and South Poles North Pole, South Pole, isn't it? So these areas are very cold, extremely cold areas. These are the coldest regions in the world. These are the coldest regions in the world. These are the coldest regions in the world. So the climate here will be extremely cold because they are covered with snow always. So when it is totally covered with snow, what will happen? It will be cold, naturally very cold. And these are the coldest regions in the world and as it is totally covered with snow, very little vegetation is found. You find a little vegetation here, very little vegetation. You can't find all types of trees growing here. In cold regions, in snow, do uh, trees will be able to grow? No. So we find very little vegetation here. In this region, we find very little region. Uh, vegetation. So, Arctic region near North Poles and South Poles, these polar regions are found and they are always covered with snow and these are the coldest regions in the world and you find very little vegetation here. So, what happens here in this polar region, you find animals, you find animals. So now the animals which are found here in these polar regions are polar regions animals have thick fur have very thick fur on their body very thick fur on their bodies they have very thick fur on their bodies so in polar regions the animals that are found have very thick fur 
very thick fur on their body because it is very cold there they have to cope up with that severe cold they have to withstand that severe cold isn't it they have to tolerate such a severe cold so in order to withstand such a severe cold their bodies are covered with thick fur and moreover they have a very thick layer of fat underneath the fur and they have a thick layer of fat thick layer of fat underneath the fur and that keeps the body warm and that keeps the body warm do you understand it yeah? so these are very cold regions no very severe so severe very cold so they have to withstand that cold they have to cope up with that cold so their body is covered with the thick fur and moreover they have a very a layer of fat underneath the fur underneath the fur and that keeps the body warm so in that way yeah they have and moreover these animals live in groups there moreover these animals live in groups moreover these animals in the polar region they live in groups polar region animals live in groups no for example if you take penguins penguins are the examples that are found in the polar regions isn't it penguins you find there polar bears you find you find arctic uh, snowy owl in that way we have arctic fox so these are different types of animals that are found in the polar regions so animals in the polar regions live in groups for example you take penguins penguins they live in groups always so they form a group and live. so they form circles and uh, they come very close to one another they form a group and they live like that why because in order to keep them warm so the penguins which are in the inner circles after some time they come out in the outer circle and the penguins who are in the outer circle will go in the inner circle because they have become warm now so they come out and give space to the outer ones so in that way they have mutual understanding and they live together in groups and to keep themselves warm so polar bear penguins snowy owl all these are examples of animals living in the polar regions so so this is about the polar regions polar is in antarctic and the north pole and south pole these are extremely cold regions these are the coldest regions in the world and here there is very little vegetation and the animals that are found in this region have very thick fur so that they have to which send the cold and moreover they have a thick layer of fat also underneath the fur that makes them to keep their bodies warm and moreover these animals live in groups just now i explained you how penguins live in groups together isn't it so polar bear penguins snowy owl next is the walrus seals all these are examples of the animals that are found in the polar regions now let us learn about the mountains so you have learned about the forest you have come to know about the polar regions now we will learn about the mountains so now mountains what the mountains are also hilly areas with rocky surface mountains mountains is also one of the habitats where you can find some variety of life Isn't it? Some kind of life is found also on the mountains. So let us learn about the mountains. What are these mountains? Mountains are the hilly areas. Hilly areas with rocky surface.
there is snow falling winters. You also find the snow falling winters here. Himalayan mountains, you see, isn't it? So mountains, hilly areas, rocky surface and cold climate and snow falling winters. You will observe there will be snowfall. So the animals that are found there are mountain goat, yak, mountain goat, yak and snow leopard. Snow leopard, mountain goat, mountain goat and yak are some of the examples of animals that are found in the mountains are the examples of animals that you find in the mountains which is also one of the land habitats isn't it so you have learned about the forest you have learned about the polar regions now we have learned about the mountains next i'm going to continue with the another habitat that is desert now let us learn about the deserts now what is a desert we have learned about the habitats and forests. We have learned about the polar regions. We have learned about the mountains. Now we will learn about deserts. Now what is a desert? It is a dry sandy area. Isn't it? It is a dry sandy area and very hot place. It is dry sandy area. Desert. Dry sandy hot area with very little rainfall with very little rainfall isn't it? so desert it is also a habitat and here how is the climate here? it is dry, sandy and hot area with very little rainfall the rainfall is so scanty so little that sometimes when it falls it evaporates in the air only it will not even reach the ground. So hot it will be there. And they have very little vegetation there. Very little vegetation, very little rainfall. Now, it is usually hot during the daytime and it is very cold at night. Isn't it? So, it is very hot during the day and very hot, very cold during the night time. So, here the animals in this desert area, they have skin. They have thick skin. So that very thick skin that will prevent the loss of water from their bodies by sweating. You sweat no? We sweat. Isn't it? Summer season don't we sweat? Yes. Lot of sweating will be there. Sweating means what? Water waste coming out from your body. So in that way you feel thirsty. You feel like eating lot, drinking lot of water. Here these animals that are living in the desert as the water is very scanty they are having very thick skins so that they can prevent the loss of water from their bodies through sweating. In that way they reduce the loss of water from their bodies. Do you understand? So they have very thick skins to reduce the loss of water from their bodies in the form of sweating. Isn't it? So now some animals also live in the burrows to escape the heat. Isn't it? So some animals also live in the burrows to escape the heat. And some animals they store lot of water in their bodies, food and water in their bodies. Some animals store, store lot of water and food in their bodies. Food in their bodies. Isn't it? So they store lot of food. For example, you take camel. Camel is an example of animal that lives in a desert, isn't it? So this camel, what does it do is, when there is water, it drinks lot of water at a time. And then it will have one sack in its stomach. It will store the water there. And it will use whenever it requires. In the same way, you see, you find a big hump on the back of camel, isn't it? This hump is nothing but the stored fat, fat of the body. It stores the food in the form of fat. So when it doesn't get food for some time or some days, it will use the fat from its hump to provide energy to its body. Isn't it? So in this way, animals have thick skins that are living in the desert so that they can prevent the loss of water from their bodies. Some animals eat lot of food and drink lot of food when it is available and 
and they will store in their bodies and use that food when in the time of need. So camel, bandicoot, some part, uh, desert tortoises, some types of snakes are the examples. Camel, bandicoot, desert tortoise. These are the examples of animals that live in the desert. Some types of snakes. Types of snakes. So snakes are also found in deserts. In water also you find snakes. So snakes are of different kinds and they have different types of habitats. So they live in different habitats also. So camel, bandicoot. Bandicoot is mostly found in the Australian desert. It's also a marsupial. Marsupial and they are pouched mammal. Pouched mammal and a kangaroo. Kangaroo, you see, it will be carrying the baby in its pouch, isn't it? So these are called these type of animals. Australia also inside Australia, Victoria Desert. It is also large part of Australia is a desert. So we find some animals in that desert also. So bandicoot is mostly found in the Australian desert. You understand? So in that way, these are the different types of animals that are found in the desert area. So desert is a place where the dry climate, sandy area and very hot climate is found. There is very little rainfall, little vegetation also. In that way, desert is the one of the habitats where you find some animals living in that type of habitat also. Next is the fresh water. Now what do you mean by fresh water? Now let's just learn fresh water. Fresh water, fresh water habitat, rivers, lakes, ponds, all these come under lakes, ponds, all these come under fresh water habitats. Come under fresh water habitats. So in rivers, water will be flowing. Some places like ponds and uh, lakes, the water is still there only. It doesn't move. So, some type of animals that you find here are some kind of fish, crab, salamander, toads, swan, crane are the examples of are the examples of animals that are found in fresh water. So these are the examples of animals that are found in the fresh water. Now let us learn about the ocean. Ocean is also one of the habitats, water habitats, isn't it? Oceans. Ocean is also one of the habitats. Oceans are the largest habitats on the earth. Largest habitat. Largest habitats. Why? Because two thirds of the earth's surface is Water. Two thirds earth surface is water. Isn't it? So we find animals living in this water also. And these animals can live deep inside the waters. Deep waters. Some animals in oceans live in deep waters. Deep waters and where sunlight also doesn't reach. So in that place, so in that zone also they live. So they can survive. The animals which are in the ocean they live in the deep waters and they can survive without sunlight also. Can survive without the sunlight. Without sunlight. They are deep. Isn't it? Oceans are the largest habitats because two thirds of the earth's surface is covered with water. Salty water. They can live in the salty water. These are salty waters, oceans, isn't it? So you can find the animals that can survive in these salty waters. They can live in the deep waters and they can live in the areas where they cannot get sunlight also, isn't it? Deep inside the oceans, sunlight cannot reach. So in that areas also some animals can survive. So these can tolerate high pressure. The animals living in these deep waters, they can also tolerate very high pressure. Tolerate high pressure. Very high pressure. This can tolerate very high pressure. The animals living in the deep waters, they can live without the sunlight of the water. They can tolerate the very high pressures. So, animals such as whale, dolphin, sea, seahorse, animals such as